Hi guys, I hope you're well, and uh, yeah, welcome to another week of Wargaming at the Bunker. So, um, over the weekend, I managed to try out the new Sisters of Battle, Adeptus Sororitas Codex, in three Crusade games. So we've got an ongoing Crusade, and this is why I originally started the Sisters, and then I've had a new Codex come along. And uh, yeah, so we had three games on the Sunday at Firestone Games in Swindon, so a big shout out to those guys, Glyn, for keeping us all safe and COVID secure. Um, yeah, absolutely spot on. I encourage anyone who's local to go in and say hello to the guys and, and check out their range of products. They're, they're absolutely brilliant. Um, however, so my three games, what happened? So I had three games. The first one was Recon, and I played World Eaters. Um, yeah, so I, it was an enjoyable game, and, you know, the World Eaters just kick, kick heads in, don't they? And, uh, you know, like I found out just how useful Sisters Repentia are, even though I got charged by Warp Talons, the Sisters Repentia with their stratagem, which lets them to attack even if they die, they actually wiped them out, <laughs> which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, however, playing Recon, um, 20 power of my 40 power just never turned up. Um, and my opponent, Ethan, he got his um, his Red Butchers in and they, they lived up to the name and they basically just killed everything. So, yeah, it was a loss, but it was interesting and sort of really showed me the potential, I think, of Sisters Repentia in the new Codex. So, yeah, one loss. On to my next game, I played a really interesting Thousand Sons Army. Um, and it was all done like bulls, <laughs> like Zangors, and these spawns were like minotaurs and stuff like that. It was a really cool idea, and also gave the guy an Age of Sigmar army as well. Um, yes, this is this was a different story. It's a close, you know, hard fought game. Um, but what the sisters do well is is we we deal with the witch, and uh, yeah, I mean the kind of like slot of this thing that was on the disc floating about, and yeah, it is it was a victory for the sisters of battle. Um, yeah, he managed to destroy one of the four objectives, the uh, sort of like you had know, to raise them to the ground and stuff like that. But the sisters, as soon as they start against things that are demon and start with holy trinities on the weapons and stuff like that, the punishment they put out is astronomical. Um, but yeah, really good game, really cool opponent, really themed list, and he'd come along just to sort of fill up, fill in for a man that couldn't make it. And um, yeah, it was really cool, and it was really nice to see his, his sort of really thematic army. And my third and final game, I played the Alpha Legion. So yeah, um, interesting. Alpha Legion are pretty cool, like the over a certain distance, it's minus one to hit them, and so on and so forth. But long story short, the Sisters of Repentia absolutely battered his army. They, they just went through everything. It was a relic mission. Um, so I had a Sisters of Battle Squad move up and just um, took the relic, basically. But by that time, the Sisters of Repentia had just practically killed everything that was a space marine. Um, immolators were, yeah, dealt with hell brutes. It was, it was pretty brutal on the Heretic, that game. Lovely opponent, really nice guys when to come onto the club and stuff like that. And we'll, we'll have plenty of games in the future. And it was really nice to sort of meet him. Um, but yeah, the, it was the sister's absolutely direct face. So the game ended two wins. So the day ended two wins to one loss, uh, which meant that I was defending Helios's Forge World, which is fantastic. So basically it was defended. Um, the uh, world eaters made off with some sort of supplies, but oh, long story short, the Imperials, we, uh, with my Adeptus Militar Militarum allies and Space Wolves, we, we, we held back the tide of chaos, basically. Um, yeah, so Flashpoint 1 is done and the Imperial is victorious, which is lovely. So, what I promised you in the unboxing of the Codex is a bit of a review of the Crusade rules. So, let's have a look. So, as with all new 9th edition codexes, the sisters now have their own unique crusade rules, requisitions, and so on and so forth. And it's pretty cool. You can actually send one of your characters on the path to becoming a living saint, um, which I've done with my canoness, but we'll go on to that in a bit. So, um, battle traits. We have different ones, obviously, specific for them. So, sororitas units, uh, infantry, and paragon warsuits can roll on this table. Can I get pure of soul? At the end of your opponent's psychic phase, if one or more units with this trait pass to deny the witch test, gain a miracle dice. Winner. <laughs> Valor of the Saints. At the end of the morale phase, if one or more units with this trait pass to morale test during the phase, gain a miracle dice. Armor of Contempt. Um, I managed to actually roll this twice on my two of my sister's units. Uh, the Invulnerable Saving Throw, received, received by Shield of Faith, is improved by one to a maximum of four plus. Veteran of the Covenant. Uh, select one model in this unit. Uh, if the unit has a unit champion, such as a sister superior, for example, you must select that model. Add one to the attacks and leadership characteristic of the selected model. In addition, unless the selected model is a character you also receive, you also add one to the selected model's wounds. 
which is pretty cool, isn't it? Let's be honest. Zealous Devotion. Uh, the unit gains the Zealot ability. If it already has Zealot, improve the weapon skill characteristic of it by one. And I actually managed to get that. My sister's Repentia, so they really do wreck face now. Um, exemplars of the Creed. Once per battle at the start of your command phase, select one sacred right that is not active for your army or this unit until the start of your next command phase. That sacred right is active for this unit in addition to any others that are active for your army. So that's that's really cool, isn't it? And that's how you can sort of stack them up and so on and so forth. Cult Imperialis units. I don't have any of those, but you can get Aegis of Belief. This unit has a Shield of Faith ability, which is pretty cool, isn't it? You can give it to something that normally wouldn't have it. Faithful Devotees, this unit has the Sacred Rites ability. Note that if the Aegis of the Empress Sacred Rite is active for your army, it has no benefit to this unit unless you have a Shield of Faith ability. Yeah, fair enough, because you could get some really, really brutal combos otherwise, couldn't you? And you also have Unquenchable, unquenchable Fanaticism. This unit loses... It's zealous ability, and instead, each time a model in this unit makes a melee attack, you can re-roll the hit roll. So it's not just if you charge, get charged, or heroically intervene. Hospitalia units, spiritual healer. So your hospitalia can say if this model is part of your crusade army, and if it was not destroyed during the battle, then at the end of the battle, you can ignore one failed out of action roll, um, which is brilliant, apart from vehicle saint potential living saints. The test is treated as having been passed, which is really, really handy in this. Um, <clears throat> ben got a couple of sort of hobbling <laughs> things on his guardians during the day, um, but more on that as we uh, play some more crusade games. Final rights. Uh, so this model has the following ability: last rights, aura. Uh, select a while a friendly sister's unit adapters ministerium unit is win six. This model each time that unit makes a morale test and a modified roll of a one to three is always successful. That's brilliant. And Adeptus Ministerium Priests can get Solemn of Prayer, or Solemn in Prayer. This model knows one additional hymn for the hymns of battle. But yeah, wow. Um, and Bombastic Projection. <laughs> Brian, blessed. Each time this model <laughs> intones a hymn, add one to the dice roll to see if that hymn is inspiring. So yeah, really characterful, really cool. And they're not massively game-breaking, because bear in mind, you're playing a crusade. Everyone else has got these sort of things for their armies as well. Um, Trial of the Living Saints. So you can spend a uh, requisition point and... Put your character on a trial, basically, to become a living saint. She becomes a saint potentia and gains what's called points against these trials. Um, you also gain what's called martyr points. Um, so if they ever fail an out-of-action test after the battle, gain one martyr point, and you must make a martyrdom test. If you do so, roll a d6, adding the current number of martyr points to the result. If the total is greater than the model's leadership, the test is passed, and they've been martyred, and they must be removed from your order of battle. Fair enough, otherwise nothing happens. If a saint potential or living saint is martyred, every other unit that it was in your crusade army for that battle gains a number of experience points equal to the saintly reward points of the martyred saint potential or living saint. Now that is incredible. So, for example, you can go on a trial of faith and you score a tally against it. And once you get to 10, you gain this ability, essentially. So you can have... Beacon of Divine Grace, you earn two saint points at the end of the battle if the model performs three or more acts of faith. Miraculous Feet, earn a saint point at the end of the battle if this model used a blessing of the faithful miraculous ability. Earn a saint point at the end of the battle if this model intoned three or more inspiring hymns. And you earn a saint point at the end of the battle if this model is on the battlefield and you have three or more miracle dice remaining. So once you get this to ten, you gain the saintly reward, which is Boundless Faith. At the start of each battle round, if this model is on the battlefield, we gain a miracle dice. The miracle dice can only be used for the model, which performs the acts of faith, or uses a miraculous ability. And if it is not used by the end of the battle round, it is discarded. Well, that just for playing and getting it for free, I think it's really cool. Um, eventually, you can abandon these if you, at the end of the battle if you don't feel you can get there. Um, and you can't have more than five saintly rewards, okay? If a model ever gets five of these, they become a living saint, okay? So a trial of suffering, you can get scars of the penitent, you earn three saint points each time this model gains a battle scar, lose three saint points each time this model loses a battle scar. Martyr's wounds, and one saint point at the end of the battle if this model suffered one or more mortal wounds. Purification of the flesh, and one saint point at the end of the battle if this model was destroyed, or if it has less than half its starting number of wounds. And tortured souls, and one saint point at the end of the battle if this model was affected by a malediction psychic power during the battle. That's pretty cool, you get a saint point for dying, which is really handy for me, because my stuff dies no end. Um, and if you gain ten, 
You get miraculous recovery. Once per battle at the start of any phase, this model regains D3 lost wounds. In addition, any battle scars this model has are removed from its Crusade card, and any further battle scars it gains are ignored. Wow. And you've also got Trial of Purity. So, Suffer Not the Mutant, you earn two Saint points at the end of battle if you destroyed an enemy Psyker. Deny the Witch, earn a Saint point if you deny the Witch. Yep. Uh, earn one Saint point for Divine Protection. If the model passed one or more invulnerable saves, conferred by a shield of faith and blessed by the Emperor, earn a same point at the end of the battle if this model was destroyed during the battle but was subsequently returned to the battle because of any wound, uh, any rule. Now, bear in mind, you've got a stratagem that lets you bring for the use of a miracle dice of a one, two, or three, you can bring a character back with that many wounds. Um, and if you gain 10, you gain blazing soul fire once per battle at the end of any phase, this model can unleash a burst of pure soul fire. When it does so, roll a 1d6 for each enemy unit within 6 on a 2 plus that suffers a mortal wound. Or, if they're a Psyker or Chaos, they suffer d3. <laughs> Trial of the Righteous, which is what my Canoness is on. Canoness Cilicia is on this now. Uh, Slay the Demigod. Um, earn 2 same points if you destroy the enemy Warlord. Cast down the Heretic. Earn a same point at the end of the battle. If this model is destroyed, or has destroyed one or more Chaos units. Uh, smite the Unbelievers, earn a same point if you destroy five or more enemy models during the battle. And Emperor's Wrath, earn one same point at the end of the battle if this model inflicts a total of three or more mortal wounds. I'm on there uh, five out of ten now, uh, after my games. Righteous Wrath, so if you get ten, you get once per battle at the end of the fight phase. If this model is within engagement range of one of enemy units, it can fight again. Lovely. And the last one is Trial of Valor. Holy Crusader, and two certain points at the end of the battle if this model is within range of an objective marker that is within your opponent's deployment zone. Selfless in the face of danger, and a certain point at the end of the battle if this model performed one or more heroic interventions, mighty deeds, and one certain point at the end of the battle if this model used two or more epic deed stratagems during that battle, and pious reputation, and one certain point at the end of the battle if this model earned more experience points than any other unit from your Crusade army during the battle. And if you get those, you get Serene Heroism, this model gains objective secured. In addition, once per battle, when this model uses an epic deed stratagem, that stratagem costs a hero command points. So yeah, they are really cool, but getting there, you actually have to perform quite a lot of things. And if you want to be a living saint, you have to do all of them, basically, which is very unlikely it's going to happen. So I'm just going to keep plowing on with my canoness and see if she gets so far in it. And if she gets martyred, great, the rest of the army gets even better. And we're on to agendas. So again, 9th edition codex, you get your own agendas. So we've got test of faith. Keep a test of faith tally for each unit in your army. Each time unit performs an act of faith using a miracle dice, add one to the tally. If it ever fails a morale test, it's set back to zero. At the end of the battle, you get an experience for each of every mark on the test of faith tally to a maximum of three. Burn the witch. Keep a burn the witch tally. Um, add one to the unit's burn the witch tally each time it destroys an enemy psyker. Add three instead if it was destroyed by an attack made with a flame weapon. Each unit gains a number of experience points equals to the Man of the Witch tally up to a maximum of five points per unit. Atonement. When you select this agenda, select one Sisters Repentia unit from your Crusade Force or Adeptus Sorites unit from your Crusade Force that has lost one of the following but that has one of the following battle scars. Loss of reputation, disgrace, mark of shame, or battle weary. At the end of the battle, if a melee attack made by this unit during the battle destroyed an enemy unit whose power rating was greater than that unit, then this unit loses one of the aforementioned battle scars. It gains five experience points, and if it's sister or pension unit, it gains one redemption point. Make a note on the Crusade card and see glorious redemption. Which is opposite, apparently. Okay. <laughs> the Seed of the Imperium. At the end of the battle, make a Seed of the Imperium tally for up to three Adeptus Rogers units in your Crusade army that either destroyed one or more enemy units during the battle or the end of the battle within a range of an objective marker. Add one to each of these units' tallies for each of the following that apply. That unit is not at its starting strength. Bear in mind I'm mad lady, so this is really good for me. Um, the unit is destroyed. Subtract one from each of these unit tallies if, it, if you lost the battle. Each unit gains a number of experience points equal to the Seed of the Imperium tally. Reclaim the Relic. If you select this agenda, then after both sides have finished deploying, your opponent must set up one objective marker anywhere on the battlefield that is not within their own deployment zone. This objective marker represents a holy relic, <laughs> but does not count as an objective marker for rules purposes. Any Adeptus Ministerium character units in your army can attempt the following. Recover the Relic. 
At the end of the movement phase, one Adeptus Ministorum character unit from your army that is within three inches of a Holy Relic objective marker can start to perform the action. Um, usual if no enemy units or aircraft. Um, the action is completed at the end of the turn. If completed, remove the Holy Relic from the battlefield and a unit gains three experience points if it completed this action and you can additionally use the Relic Requisition to give that character unit a Relic as if it were gained a rank without spending Requisition points. Wow. <laughs> Speaking of Requisitions, so the way Crusade works, guys, I'm just assuming that we know that, but you gain Requisition points, you can spend them to increase the size of your force, update your weaponry, so on and so forth. So for one Requisition point, we can have Saintly Benedictions. Purchase the requisition when a Canoness or Palatine model from a Crusade Force gains Battle Hardened, Heroic or Legendary. That model is upgraded to have a Blessing of the Faithful. Increase its power rating accordingly and make a note on the Crusade card. You cannot purchase this requisition if you, if doing so it would cause your total power level to exceed your Crusade. So you can basically give it like the turn off Invulnerable Saves and Word of the Emperor and stuff like that. Devout Warrior is one. Purchase this requisition in your Crusade Force does not contain a Saint Potential model. Select an Adeptus Sorotus character model from your army. That model becomes a prospective new living saint and gains Saint Potentius. That's what I did for my Canoness. Holy Pilgrimage, one to three. Purchase this requisition when a Saint Potential unit from your army gains a rank. This model gains one Saint point for each requisition point you spend on this requisition. So that's a way of sort of like finishing off the ones you found a bit more difficult. The Penitent Path is one RP. Purchase this requisition. When a Battle Sister Squad, Dominion Squad, or Retributor unit from your Crusade Force suffers a devastating blow, or when one of these units gains the disgraced Mark of Shame or Battle Weary Battle Scars, replace that unit with a Sister's Repentia unit from the same order militant. You cannot purchase this requisition for doing so would take your total power over the total power limit. Uh, the unit, new unit has the same number of experience points and the same battle and some battle scars the unit replaced. Um, if the battle honour cannot be applied, for example a weapon enhancement, select a new battle honour to replace it. Add one to the unit's crusade points, and each time this unit uses the Desperate for Redemption strategy, that strategy costs zero CP. Wow. That's incredible. Desperate for Redemption is the strat that lets Resistors Repentia hit even if they die. Um, glorious Redemption. Purchase this requisition at any time. Select a Sisters Repentia unit from your Crusade Force that has three or more redemption points. See the Atonement Battle agenda. So, there we go, that one. Replace that unit with one of the following. Celestins, Sacrosants, Seraphim or Zephyrim. The un new unit must be drawn from the same order. Cattle go for your power limits on and so forth. The new unit has the same number of experience points on battle honours. And you add one to the unit's crusade points, and each time it, has, it uses the exceptional proficiency embodied prophecy or deadly descent, that it costs zero. Now, this is really cool. So it means that, like, if some, one of your units fails, it can become Repentia, or Repentia can actually rep repent and become sisters again. Just really characterful and really good with crusade. And we have crusade relics. So. When a character gains a Crusade Relic, you can instead select one of these. So Artificer ones, they have to, an Adaptus Ministrum character model can be given one of the following Artificers, Relics instead of 1% in the book. The Vile of Dolan, add one to the bearer Strength, Attacks and Leadership. Parasidium Reserius, you get a 4 plus in Vulnerable Save, and each time the bearer would lose a Mortal Wound on a 4 plus, that wound is not lost. Tears the Emperors, like a grenade full of holy water basically uh, six inch range grenade one and each time an attack is made with this weapon if the target is hit it suffers a mortal wound and the sequence ends if they are chaos they suffer d3 mortal wounds so then you've got antiquity relics so you have to be a hero rank yeah so you add one to the unit's total crusade points if you take one of these and this is in addition to the plus one for gaining a battle runner for a total of plus two okay the mace of valarn Dogmata model only. This re this relic replaces a mace of righteousness and has the following profile. Two times strength, minus three, three damage. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, subtract one theater roll. So it just like hits harder, basically. Icon of Sanctity. It gives you the following abilities. Holy Dread. Holy Dread, Batman. When a friendly Adaptus Ministerium character or core unit is within three inches of the bearer, subtract two from charge rolls made for, for any unit that declares a, gain, a charge against them. Wow. Um, Holy Fervor, when a friendly Adaptus Minister on character or a core unit is within three of the bearer, each time a model in that friendly unit makes a pile in or consolidation, they can move up to an additional three inches. It, wow, okay, yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? Legendary Relics, so again, you've got to be of a, I believe it's, is it Legendary Rank? 
And let's have a look. Forward life instead of blue, 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 blue. You can also pay a requisition point. Yeah, okay. There, yeah, legendary rank in it a bit. So it's an additional two. So basically, taking one of these will add three to your crusade points total. Uh, the Rod of Grace. Adeptus writers only. If a Diodulus or Dogmata model has this relic, they know all the hymns from the hymns of battle. If another model has this relic, that model gains the priest keyword. Oh, wow. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. You can make one of your other characters a priest. That's cool. And the blade of abnomation, 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 abnomation. <laughs> Sister Sorotus model equipped with a blessed blade or power sword only. Okay, this relic replaces a blessed blade or power sword and is strength plus three, minus three, three damage. And each time an attack is made with a weapon against a character, the attack automatically hits. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, but these are like sort of legendary relics. You're talking like you, you'll have been playing a crusade for a while and you're going up against some hardcore stuff. And there we go, and then we've got some beautiful crusade armies there. And then we're back into the data sheets. That's crusade. So there we go. It was a really fun day, guys. We're the lots of fun three games. I'm, I'm really excited to play more. I love crusade, it's a bit so as long as you play it thematically and you know, you know that you may get chinned because the scenario and so on and so forth it's all good fun um, i'm going to be taking sisters match play as well uh, so there's that coming up but for now thank you for watching do subscribe for more and as always stay safe stay well and wherever you are in this world happy hobbying